This is part 96 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery resizable widget. Let's understand this with an example. Here, we've got a div element. This div element along with this style class applied will be rendered like this. We also have one line of jQuery code here. So basically, we are finding the div element using its ID and then we are calling the jQuery UI resizable function. So this line of jQuery code is going to make this div element a resizable div element. I have this exact same code already typed. So if we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. Notice on the div element, we've got a resize handle using which we can resize this div element. Resizable widget has got loads of options and events available to customize its behavior. Let's look at these options one by one. First, let's look at also resize. This option is useful if you want to automatically resize other elements on the page based on the resizing that you're doing to the current element. Let's understand this with an example. So at the moment on this page, we've got only one div element. So let's make a copy of this and I'm going to change the ID of the div to blue div and let's change the background color to blue and the text inside the div element to blue div. Let's save our changes, reload this page and look at this now when I resize red div nothing happens to blue div. What I want to do is as I'm resizing red div I also want to automatically resize blue div. To achieve that we can use also resize option also resize. So along with the element that we are currently resizing, we also want to resize an element with ID blue div. So let's save our changes, reload this page and look at this. When we resize red div, it also resizes blue div. Animate. Animates to the final size after resizing. So let's use this option. So I'm going to specify animate to true and let's get rid of the other development that we have here. Save our changes and let's go ahead and reload this page and look at this. When I increase the width, look at that, the increase is animated. Now at the moment the problem is it's not displaying any outline as we are resizing it. If you want an outline to be displayed, then use this class on your page, ui-resizable-helper. So let's go ahead and specify that class within the style section, ui-resizable-helper. And I'm going to specify border style here. So I'm going to specify a two pixel dotted black border. So let's save our changes. Let's go ahead and reload our page and look at this. Now we have an outline. Aspect ratio. This option specifies whether the element should preserve aspect ratio. That means when you increase, you know, when you resize, for example, width, do you want to resize height to the same ratio? Similarly, when you resize height, do you want to resize width also to the same proportion? If you want to preserve that aspect ratio, then set this option to true. At the moment, look at this. When I change width, nothing happens to height. Similarly, when I change height, nothing happens to the width. To preserve that aspect ratio, set aspect ratio option to true. Let's save our changes and look at this. When we change width, height changes proportionately. Auto-hide specifies whether the resize handles should hide when the user is not hovering over the element. If you look at this resizable div element, notice that resize handle, it's always visible. Now, if you want to auto-hide that, that is, when you are not hovering over the element, if you don't want that resize handle to be visible, then set auto hide option to true. So let's go ahead and do that. Auto hide. I'm going to set that to true. Reload the page and look at this. At the moment, we don't have the resize handle, but the moment we mouse over that development, we get that resize handle using which we can resize the development. Containment. This option constrains resizing to within the bounds of the specified element or region. Let's understand this with an example. Here I have a div element, so let's copy that and paste it within 
our form section and I'm going to move this div element inside this container div. So let's cut that from there and paste it here. So now for the red div, the parent is this container div. Let's save the changes and let's reload this page. So the red div is now present within the parent div and look at this. Now when I increase you know, when I resize it, I'm able to resize it beyond the bounds of the container element. Now, let's say for some reason I want to limit it to, you know, the bounds of that parent element. If that's the case, use containment option. So, I am going to specify containment and I'm going to set it to the ID of the parent element. The ID of the parent element is container. So let's copy that and specify it as the value for containment option. So we are using ID selector here. Let's save the changes and let's go ahead and reload our page. Now look at this. Beyond the bounds of that parent element, you cannot resize it. Okay, the maximum you can do is um, until the bounds of the parent element. Ghost. This option specifies whether a semi-transparent helper element should be shown for resizing. So let's go ahead and set that option to true. Save the changes and let's reload this page. Look at this now. A semi-transparent um, helper will be displayed. So until that point it will be resized. max height, min height, max width, min width. So basically these options specify the maximum and minimum height and width to which you can resize the element to. So in the interest of time I have already typed the values for these options so let's copy them and paste it. Let's actually remove the parent element here. So let's get rid of that parent div. Save our changes and I'm going to copy the options that I have just um, paste the options that I have just copied. So basically here we are saying minimum height should be 100 pixels, minimum width should be 100 pixels, max height is 300, max width is 300. So beyond 300 pixels I should not be able to increase height or width and the minimum to which I can resize it is 100 pixels height and 100 pixels width. Beyond that I should not be able to reduce its height and width. Let's save our changes reload this page and look at this. I can reduce its width but only uh, until 100 pixels. Similarly height to a minimum of 100 and width and height I can increase them to a maximum of 300 um, you know pixels. Now let's look at you know start stop and resize events. So start event is triggered at the start of resize operation, stop at the end of resize operation and resize this is triggered during the resize operation. Let's look at an example. So here we have an example of using also resize option and this constraints resizing to within the bounds of the container div. So here we have an example of handling all those three events. So this is what we want to do. We have a div element here. Now as we are resizing this div element, you know, we want to display the dimensions at start, stop, and during resizing. So what is the height and width of the div element at the start of resize operation? What are height and width when we stop resizing and while we are resizing? Okay, and to get this table layout, we are using an HTML table here, and this table has got three TRs, and each TR has got two TDs. And notice we have a div element to display start dimensions, stop dimensions, and resizing dimensions, that is the dimensions during resize operation. Okay, and we have a red div element here. So in the interest of time, I have already typed this table HTML. So let's copy that from our notepad and paste it right here, just above the development. And I'm going to include an HTML break and let's format this a bit. All right, so now what we want to do is handle start, stop, and resize events. Okay, so within our jQuery ready function, I'm actually going to create a function that's going to be reusable. And let's call this function get dimensions. And to this function, I'm going to pass two parameters, the event object itself and the UI element that triggered the event. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is create a variable. Let's call it HTML equals, and we want this word height equals, and we want to display the height. So how am I going to get the height? I can use this UI element, the parameter that is coming into this function, and this is going to have size property, and on that I'm going to ask for height. And let's append an HTML break, and HTML plus equals, so whatever we have in that variable, we are going to append now width. So width equals, I'm going to use the same parameter, UI.size, but this time I'm going to use width property. And this function is going to return whatever we have in that variable, HTML. And we are going to call this function when those events are triggered, that is start, stop, and resize. So let's go ahead and handle start event. So this is going to call this function when that event is triggered. So basically any event handler for jQuery UI is going to receive these two parameters, event object and the UI element that triggered the event. And inside this event handler function, I'm going to call our get dimensions function and pass the event and UI objects. Okay, so what is this going to do? This is going to return that string which contains the height and width, and we want to display that in the respective div element. So start dimensions, we want to display that in this div element. So I'm going to use the jQuery ID selector and specify the ID, and let's include the HTML function and pass the HTML to this function. So let's quickly test our start and see if this works as expected. So let's save our changes and reload this page. When we start to resize this, it should display the initial height and width. Initial height and width of 150 pixels, so that's what is displayed. And we want to do a similar thing while we are resizing it, that is during the resize operation, and when we stop resizing operation. So I'm going to make a copy of this and specify here the event as stop. So when stop event is called, this function is called. I mean, when stop event is raised and we are going to pass those parameters and whatever we are going to get back, we want to display that in a different development and the ID of that development is stop dimensions. So let's go ahead and specify the ID here. Similarly, during resize operation, Okay, this event will be called as we are resizing the development and we want to do the same thing, but the element that we want to update is resizing dimensions. So that's the development. So let's specify that here. Let's save our changes and let's go ahead and reload our page. And look at this. When we start, we get the height, uh, start height and width that is 150 and look at the height and width, you know, as we are resizing, the resize event is triggered and we get the height and width. As soon as I stop resizing, we get the height and width at stop. Here's the jQuery code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.